So, uh, um, it is the last weekend in September. Uh, last weekend also before deer archery season uh, starts. I'm on a public land here in southeast Oklahoma. A um, place I like to come down to every chance I get. I uh, plan on here in a little bit uh, going down to the creek below me and uh, fishing for some sunfish and hopefully catch my dinner. Uh, I was down here two weeks ago and it was nice. It was very, very hot then. Still kind of hot this weekend, but not near as, uh, as much as it was back then. So two weeks ago, I had uh, everything I was filming was on my cell phone. Didn't have a microphone or whatever. So this week, I just got in this new uh, video camera with a microphone. So hopefully that'll give us a little better quality. Um, so what I want to talk about now, not anything particular. Uh, just I like to camp. I like to watch other people's YouTube uh, channels where they talk about going out and camping and hiking and fishing and those are things I like to do. I'd much rather come down to the mountains in southeast Oklahoma and hike and, and fish these creeks than I would take a cruise down to Mexico or uh, the Bahamas or anywhere. And this is real close. Doesn't talk, cost a lot of money to do it. Um, the way my camp set up, I prefer just to make a lean-to tarp, uh, which is what I've done. I like to be open to everything. I like to see what's around me. I don't. I don't like tents. I, I just feel like I, you know, you can't see what's outside. I just feel like it's a sack lunch for a predator. <laughs> so I'm exaggerating a little bit, but anyway, uh, the way I've got it set up, just real simple, and I've got a cot there, and um, I like the cot especially this close. Uh, to the creek that I am. I'm only oh, 15 yards or so from the creek and there are a lot of uh, water moccasin on this creek. I took some good footage of uh, some last week. Hope to get some better uh, this week but I don't like to sleep on the ground this close to the water uh, in this part of the uh, state in the summertime simply because I don't want a cotton mouth crawling in a sleeping bag with me. Where if I'm on a cot like that, it gets me up off the ground. Uh, neat thing about the area that I'm at, it's 20 miles from the nearest town. So, you know, there's uh, nothing close. You want to pack, uh, you want to pack uh, wisely when you come down here because it's not a quick trip to town to get something. And it's remote, yet you can still drive down to it, which is, there's a, a good road down here. It's really a trail, but it's rocky soil, so it doesn't get boggy and stuff. So even when it's rainy, as it has been raining here the last uh, uh, couple of days, it's it's not boggy. Now um, tonight, I hope to uh, get some uh, video footage of uh, of some of the cottonmouth in the creek. I I, I watched uh, some of them hunting frogs uh, last time I was here, and I didn't have anything with night vision. Which brings up something. I was digging around in my closet and I found this from, gosh, 20 years ago I bought this. And it's an old Sony Handycam that runs on the 8 millimeter uh, cassette tapes. And it still works. And the one thing this has that my new camera doesn't has is have is it has a very good night vision. So I'm going to use this. Found some 8 millimeter tapes that hadn't been used. I'm going to use this tonight and hopefully get some footage of the of the cotton mouths as they as they feed down in this uh, pool in the creek below me. But before that, I plan on um, going out and catching some fish and frying fish here. Uh, on the way down, things I've got to really watch out for. I mentioned the cotton mouths. I'm I'm a snake guy. I love snakes. I don't I don't kill any of them, even the venomous ones. I mean, if I find them in my yard, I collect them carefully. I've got the tools to do it. And I, and I remove them to a, a more remote area where there's less uh, chance of them coming in contact with people. On the way down here, just up the road, uh, there was a oh, fairly large timber rattler uh, just laying out in the road, almost, I mean, real dark colored. And he was stretched out in the road, I guess, uh, it would, this was this morning, so uh, he was soaking up the heat from the asphalt. And I got out and took a few pictures of him and, and such, and he didn't, seem to pay me much attention, but I've got to really watch where I step in the woods because 
you know, getting close to the, well, it is fall, early fall now, they will be uh, moving around a lot more. So uh, I've got to really watch my step. I'll be putting on some uh, high boots uh, when I go fishing here in a little bit and, and gathering firewood and such. So around here, we, you have to, you know, just be mindful. Uh, the timber rattler is not nearly as aggressive as, as the, its cousin, the, the diamondback, which those are uh, pretty. As a, as a friend of mine, that him and his wife actually go out and snake hunt. They say the, uh, the, the uh, diamondbacks are very cantankerous, where the timber rattlers, he said, they're not so much. But they will definitely bite you if you are to step on them or uh, something like that. So you want to watch uh, where you're stepping, and they pack a real punch with their venom. You don't want to, you don't want to get bit by one. The other down here, same with the with the cottonmouth. I don't think the cottonmouth is uh, quite so venomous as the timber rattler, but still, it's it's uh, quite a quite a punch if you get bit by one. Uh, the copperhead, you know, they're a lot more mildly venomous and uh, not aggressive. Um, but you know, most people, if they're bitten by a copperhead, it's because they reached down to get something and didn't see it there and got bit or they uh, stepped on it or something like that. So, uh, you know, you don't need to be afraid of snakes. I mean, they're not out to get you. Just be mindful of uh, what's in the area that you're at. Uh, and I jokingly tell people, be mindful, know what your venomous snakes are and leave them alone, give them their space. And by all means, stay away from the sharp end is a term I like to use. Um, a lot of non-venomous snakes down here as well. Last time I was down here, there was a, uh, a racer uh, down there, and he stayed still just long enough for me to snap a photo, and he was gone. They don't stick around very long. The cottonmouth or water moccasin, uh, they will st stand their ground, so to speak. They don't uh, seem to be too frightened of people. They uh, have a reputation for... Uh, being aggressive, I've never had. I've had people say that they chased them out of the water. I've never had that happen. I've had them stand their ground and definitely act like um, they're not too worried about me. And if I come within reach, they'll bite me. So I, I don't come within reach of them. Um, do I catch snakes? Yes, I catch snakes. I catch venomous snakes once in a while. I, I don't. I'm not going to do that on video because I don't want to. Um, encourage people to do so unless you know they got the proper equipment and um, as such but I mean it's a dangerous thing to do so I tend to give them their space take a picture or whatever and, and let them go along, along their way but anyway um, like I say got a new camera and where my cell phone uh, the video went off of it uh, two weeks ago down here you could get you know, five to seven minute videos and it filled up all my memory real quick. So now I've got a new camera uh, with the microphone and I can see it's picking up my sound good where the uh, cell phone without that, if I got more than like six or eight feet away from it, it just, you know, stopped picking up. So wildlife we have down here, Southeast Oklahoma. Um, I'm in the Kaimishi Mountains um, in an area and it it's, uh, covers quite a bit of territory all the way from, uh, Pittsburgh down to uh, Lafleur County, McCurtain County. It's it's a some really nice wild area in here, and very popular with hunters and recreationers. Now where I'm at uh, right now, this is public hunting and fishing land. You're not even uh, supposed to come on this unless you have a hunting license, fishing license, or a wildlife conservation uh, permit. Which I have a fishing license, so I come down here and I fish, enjoy the solitude. The wildlife we have here, uh, we have black bear, uh, fox, which a fox is very interesting. We, uh, me and a friend of mine were uh, camping here last September, and we heard something screaming out in the woods. We're like, what in the world is that? And it turned out what it was is it got closer, we was able to identify it as a fox. And if you don't know what you're hearing, you'd think it was a person out in the, out in the woods screaming. And I've heard that a, a mountain lion uh, it can sound like a, a person screaming as well, though I've never heard one that I know of. But the black bear, I'm not concerned about them. I have found their footprints uh, in this area before when I've camped. Um, haven't seen one. Um, some friends of mine about 20 years ago were camping down here and one uh, snuck into their 
camp after their food and the dogs ran it off. And that, that was uh, quite funny. But as far as me, I have not uh, seen a black bear in this particular area uh, before. Now further east of here, over by uh, Clayton, I was driving around the roads there about oh, early 2000s and, and there, I saw a black bear in the road in front of me and it, it ran for all it was worth. So I, that's actually the only time I've seen a, a black bear in the wild here. Now, as of when I was a kid, you hardly ever saw black bear in Oklahoma. They just, you know, very rarely, but now their numbers are up enough that there is actually, uh, we have a bear season uh, in Oklahoma. So they've become quite, quite numerous in this part of the state, but they're still very shy. Um, but I, regardless, I'm careful not to leave food out and such like that. I'd, I'd like to see one in the wild, but I don't want to wake up and one's uh, uh, staring at me in my sleeping bag close quarters. <laughs> I don't want that. But anyway, just, you know, be mindful of wildlife. Uh, a lot of deer down here. There's turkey, fox, bobcat. A uh, lot of reptiles, which that's kind of my specialty is reptiles. I like to go out and see what I can see and photograph uh, in that. So in a minute, I'm going to let it cool off a bit. It's a little bit of rain in the forecast later, uh, maybe, it, but not much. But I'm going to get my tackle and uh, go down and fish here in a little bit and uh, go from there and maybe make some stuff. And I hope you uh, uh, enjoy uh, what I filmed. 